Welcome to my look at the first live action Transformers. It may not be my favorite take on the series, but my favorite film in Uncle Bay. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since it first came out. I thought that I might as well find a look at the first couple of trilogies before I go see last night, so let's get started. After some narration about a mysterious cue called The Allspark, we see a helicopter starts flying a military based guitar. Apparently, a film which tonight began development as G.I. Joe movie was read to after a conflict in started. That leaders out next, led by Josh Johan and Epps over Tyrese Gibson. They wouldn't discuss their plans when they get home. And the other members in the squad are apparently discussed by the LA Mayfair by Jose Big Figuera. Also, despite his Spanish heritage, it turns out that vaguely Spanish gibberish generally the last in Spanish speaking audiences, but Latin American European. Interesting, considering the characters was based on real life has by employee George Figueroa. Now next, then calls his wife and sees his baby girl in the base of the tact. Feel like they took a by Black on Squirrel Knock. While the films, films overall have had trouble balancing the human actors, I think it's still well of scenes, see which of a story. Well, but the was a good actor's spectacle as does Bay. After that, we see Sam with Wiki, played by Shia LaBeouf, give a genealogy of problems we got back to Archibald with Wiki. He also shows off, Lump tries to sell some artifacts to buy a car, much of a teacher's shaven. Also, the awkwardness of the scene is compounded by the fact that the teacher's played by Peter Jigasam, aka Dr. Tab on House. After Sam just barely earns an A on his paper, he joins his father Ron, played by Kevin Dunn, who would buy his car from Uncle Bob Olivia, played by the late great Bernie Mac in one scene. The car that Sam chooses is a muscle Chevrolet Camaro, and Dane's old VW Beetle, Mom Bobby Charles Jack, the price, man. While this is apparently a swipe by the original character on the TV show, it turns out there's another reason for it. The producers, who's wanted to use a new Beetle for Bumblebee, but Volkswagen said no. For obvious reasons, they didn't want the co with the franchise and toy length to AMA of violence. Porsche also said no for Jack, don't get to that. Notice, as for now, how Ron jokingly Scott Hobbs they by saying how Porsche's team begins. Anyway, after a shockwave breaks all the glass and use car a lot, Bobby agrees to sell the Camaro to Sam for $4,000. Well, that's one way to haggle. Well, we then cut to the Pentagon with Secretary John Keller, played by John Boyd, try to abuse the officials when they were on the attack of guitar, and the only they have is try to hack the feds to the shrill sound. As for the unpleasantness from Boyd, I'm not going to get into it here. My feel does not that, my feel is looking at films about IPs made for children. Even with the awkward of Sam's home life is Mother Judy, played by Julie White. I'll do my best to give these you know, these first couple films to Sirius Nook. I'll repeat this, make sure you understand. Sirius Nook at these first couple movies before I go see the last night soon. We'll make some jokes when I feel like it, but I'll be giving their first couple ones look in earnest form. As an excess man try to find and help with a mountain range, I'll by Squirrel Nook. After that, Sam is very minus crash party at the lake. I'm just Michaela Baines by Megan Fox. She may be relatively pretty, but even after 10 years, I can never really shake her acting as anything more than female Torgo from Mono's Hands of Fate. Anyway, Sam says to go ride home and she has an awkward team of my attention. After being tinkered with Camaro's engine, they reach her home and say, Sam's just more than we said with the Kama. After she leaves, he then dismisses the line as stupid. Don't be so modest, Sam. Has been able to go look for years and they still do. Meanwhile, the Pentagon's trying to determine what's the heck. It turns out Air Force One's being infiltrated by Frenzy, masquerading as portable stereo. This time, the robots who assist to get information on the Allspark managed to find even through the plus of their coordinates. As for how awkward Sam's profile is, hey, it's all different when I saw my old clothes and Star Wars tapes when I was 13. Anyway, Frenzy's joined Barricade in his search and a heck of some Frenzy called the data they needed. Also, while the joy they were about these movies are computer generated, I kind of like how they put some practical on certain shots. Like my friends in a cargo horn Air Force One, I mean. Back with Sam, he discovers that his car is being actually out by Mobi, and he records a frantic message to anyone that finds him, including something about Google Magazine in his bedroom. Yeah, I don't really get the whole discount money for like characterization either. It's the incident that we'd seen in the LAPD, and somehow I think the officer interrogating Sam would be more homework for Chief Wiggum. Lennox's unit does make it over the mountains find a working phone, but ambushed by Scorpionock. Hawk, and what's actually a relatively good action scene. Although it may have been CGI, the tiny explosion of power text made the action to be actually totally real. As for a stroke by the call, the Pentagon had to go to the tech support. I can relate, given how many calls made to Apple and Nintendo over the past couple years. The Pentagon catches wind of the attack and sends reinforcements immediately speedy afterward. 
After Scorpion Lock, which recently been hit by Saber Rounds, Nox is extracted and put on playing back to the mainland. I mean, after the lead analyst, Manny Maggie Ma Madsen, played by Manny Joe Taylor, just goes signal Air Force One, see one's the guitar. She goes see Frank Lamb, played by character after Anthony Anderson. He may not be the most capable character, but that's some qualities that can relate to since living at home, playing DDR with his cousin, and complaining about the FBI wrecking his grandmother's car when he got caught trying out the code. And it's further proven by the behavior when he's being helped by by the feds. While the first movie, the movie's first half, is kind of slow, when Bob V finds Sam again, things really start to pick up. I was also never saw this movie theater when I was younger, I was born to movies like Spider Man 3 and Harry Potter Order of Phoenix. He's been pursued by Barricade, a modified police Mustang. While Ford did, understand he didn't want to play a villain to the Royal Cars GM, custom automaker Celine. He jumped a chance of testing the movie. The fight between Bumblebee and Barricade continues in the night. The film shows has a great share of country to rock this 140 minute runtime. After beheading Frenzy, Bumblebee manages to use a bunch of audio clubs to communicate with Sam to come up with the situation. He also shaped up some new comments of Gamera, or a scene where they be Echo and Age of Extinction. After that, we're getting monitored other Autobots landing on Earth, and even though I have mixed feelings about Discord's people rise this first film, I have I have been films I've seen that I like less. There's I also kinda like this joke about the bystanders saying the snare is a hundred times cooler than Armageddon. We'll talk another time and contemplate and do a marathon of base films on six out of one thousandth episode. Anyway, the Autobots land assume vehicle modes. Jackson is a Pontiac Solstice, Iron Hand and GMC Top Kick, Rats and Ambulance, Optus Prime and Modified Semi Truck. Apparently, the Vash Nose made them look more practical on film, and they want to try to avoid the Capricorn series often known for. Autobots introduce themselves to say on this off their names and attributes. What they're missing is the phrase, available at Find Me Tales Everywhere. Also, Bumblebee's voice box damage in battle. Later films with mixed results at this plot point, I'll tell you more how I want to do the next movie. Optimus explains why they're betraying by Megatron, he did such cons after the Allspark. This turns out Captain Wick Wiki stumbled upon Megatron's body bones and nice. Of course, we also have his glasses. Optimus solves references to the eBay listing, and it's like they found Sam first. This next bit at Sam's place looks kind of awkward. Between Drew's range discussion Sam's bedroom habits, trying to find the glasses, and apparently that's me the famous robots of Sky trying to hide Ron's garden. Anyone else getting E.T. vibes from that last part? I know people was not producing those films, but it's still. Also, a robot design is more elaborate than other versions. I remember they ruined me as time passed. The face took some getting used to, especially on the eyes, kind of being like the upturned countenance. Seriously, what is it Michael Bay in eyes? It's seen doing the Ninja Turtles. Still, producer must have said we paid $150 million for this movie, and dang it, we're gonna use it. <laughs> sure enough, they find the glasses they need. Then the House of Storm makes the organization of Sector 7, with your Seymour Simmons, played by John Totally and the Charles. It's not the first actor I admire doing a movie about these toys for a quick page but he's definitely not the last. As they find me to write signatures everywhere and everyone's taken into custody. Not just that his father's in jail for a car theft and coming up for parole. Then when Simmons start asking about the aliens, Autobots, and the Soviet convoy and groups and led on car chase through the alley aqueduct. And after all these years, the Autobots are inside their convoy and groups of men on car chase. Okay, even after those years, great place to shoot these scenes. The chicky run over our cars, Grease Lightning and Grease, Chase and Terminator 2, and this goes on and on. If you might bring the top five video games, we creation in it, and all sense that's when I draw rides in. All the way to the event, Glass and Falling Septicon Hansen, McCann won't be running capturing a facility inside River Dam, which happens to be S7's based operations. Now it's convenient as his friends infiltrating the base, they turn up from a chaos from an earlier scene. Under some explanation, he's about the Allspark, S7, and Megatron. When he's not able to only get a new body, but also the, the other seven cons of Megatron's location. Bone Crusher, Starscream, Black and Scorpion, Breaker, all converge to the dam, apparently a tank. Brawl, and mistaken, the footage is devastating, even though the name is specifically combined next movie. We'll cross the bridge when we come to it. As we're entertaining, the advertisement is finally being compromised. It's not too concerning when Brian Goldner, who's been charged with Hasbro for a while, has been helping produce these movies for a while. Say something about all these deals with Mountain Dew, Apple, and Burger King, and other companies. Anyway, after an altercation, a issue between the military and the seven, Simon Shima agrees to clear Sam McKeel's charges, returns Bumblebee, 
So you can get the Osberg to Mission City, which I've been offered like in Los Angeles. I'll just consider moving here to keep with Spark, even though such a task could kill him. We'll talk about the next movie. So, the final battle begins. The military holds a hold of set comes out to get the Osberg to the city. Keller, Maggie, and Glenn finally try to find a way to contact the contact with the communications. They will do something by driving a short way to radio with a computer. This final battle begins. Megatron awakens. Even though he takes his sweet time to show up in the movie, it's another role by Hugo Weaving that doesn't think much remain much like Elrond, Red Skull, and the Smith's Mentor trilogy. Weaving openly admits to him phoning his role in this one, he won't be last to distance himself in the series after a while. The final battle is quite chaotic because I'm going to keep him into a hands at Bone Beast laser shot by one of the structure's rockets, and Michaela brings him for the tow truck. The all spark turns to some of the tech here from Megatron's Septicon, such as a car steering wheel, a Mountain Dew machine, and Xbox 360. For that last one, all I had to worry about was the infamous Red Wing of Death. <clears throat> While the battle does get pretty heavy as it goes on, saying it will become common later films, I can't deny the appeal of Optimus when they say to engage Megatron. This also indicates how the live action is on quite brilliant to push your combat, showing Megatron ripping jazz in half. It's probably made drain fall for me, even though I wouldn't put this movie in the same category as first couple of Turner movies, a Star Wars movie, or a Marvel Studios movie. They do at least try to show what happened when Boxer World was brought to Earth, and we create the often chaotic background battles my brother and I had when we were younger with my Optimus Cyclone and his Cyclone's figures, man. And Megatron then confronts Sam before he can get the key to the military, and when Megatron offers refuge as his pet, Sam refuses. Again, while the robots were CGI, all of them closed us back, the buff only had a harness only for that stunt, man. Not to say we'll rescue Sam, him, and gives a big strong fight in the city center. I rather like the inclusion of the One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall line from the day six movie, mm -hmm. I'd like to address that in the near future. Optimus tells Sam to put the cube hoob in his chest and send him to the Megatron spark, effectively killing him. 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 Bombie can also speak and choose a meeting with Sam's guardian. Search of Sam is abandoned, the master turns off his child, Sam will cancel our relationship. Then close the animation of Optimus Prime, voicing on Peter Cullen. Questioning that any survivor of on Earth, see how Hermione is flawed, like, much like them, there's more than meets the eye. So, that's the first live action Transformers. I used to not like this movie as much as other people, I saw one and I warmed to it. The sequel is kind of down to this, not, not quite seems smooth, sound very straight up Bayham, which I why I prefer them. Still, as some of the fluff goes, I've seen worse. The guys also indicate kind of everything that would follow, combining pictures of an action, and vehicle for youth in your proper positioning. Uh, it's the next movie, I then I really can't go into these movies since based on what have a Star Wars movie, more of a cinematic universe movie. In fairness, first Iron Man I had a movie, I expect it's going to be a year later. Still, while the film may not be my favorite, take a fancy of my favorite from my bay, it's overall okay. Not good, not bad, just okay. Even though it's a bit scattered shot in terms of story and characterization, more than makes up for shortcomings in terms of action special effects. The redesigned robots, even find Oscar nominees for best special effects, but Lost the Golden Compass, which we'll get to another time. I was also among the high school's of 2007, maybe even $19 million in the US, so $9 million with a $150 million budget. Big green sales at toys that I forward. It will be more to dress next time, but keep in mind, I'll say what you, hey, what you think I will. Five and two and a half stars four. Before I go see the last night, next time I'll take a 2009 sequel to the end, Twins of the Fallen. See you, Space Cowboy. Mm hmm.